Welcome to Wild Ones. We're just gonna dive right in tonight into intercession and worship. If you're watching online, we just wanna welcome you wherever you are to join us and just open yourself up to Abba Father. Open your spirit up and allow him to come and invade. Abba, we come to you right now and we say have your way in our lives. Have your way in this house. Have your way in this room. Abba, I ask that you come right now and manifest your spirit in this house. Manifest your tangible agape love in our midst, Abba. We open ourselves up to you as your sons and your daughters, and we say, establish your kingdom in us. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. try to come up in this house. I thank you for the real deal. I thank you that heaven will come here today. I thank you that the angelic warriors are partnering in the atmospheres above us. We partner our cries with heaven. We partner our prayers. And I declare that your kingdom will manifest right here, right now. to your presence. You're inviting us into your throne room. You're inviting us into your lap to sit with you and be where you are. Father in heaven, we love you. In Jesus, we love you. We thank you for the sun. We thank you for the picture of your perfection in the face of your son, Jesus. I thank you that you're a good father. I declare to the air that you're a good father. Lord, I ask by your spirit that every ear that was not formerly an ear that could hear is open tonight. That every ear be an ear that can hear what you're saying to the earth right now in this space, Lord. That every heart that was far from you be drawn close by the blood of Jesus. That we would see amazing thing that you call the gospel from Old Testament to new that the fullness the big picture God in the fullness of the wisdom that you've had since the beginning of time that it would be drawn near to our Lord that we would hear the name of Jesus and that it would not just be some distant thing to us that the mystery of the gospel would be opened up to every year that we would see you rightly God you have always been a father you have always been a father you didn't just become a father it was always in your DNA it was always your spirit it was always part of who you are our eternal father from the beginning so Jesus you came to show us rightly the relationship that we can have with our Father in heaven, and we step fully into that tonight. I say, I am a son, and you are a son, and you are a daughter in the name of Jesus. Let this identity rest upon us tonight in the spirit of Jesus. Yes, we thank you, Lord, that you have chosen us. You have chosen us to be sons and daughters, and you are not only our Abba Father, you are the what he's called us to accomplish 
if we will see ourselves the way he sees us, his precious, loving children, sons and daughters of the Most High, that loves his children that he chose. He accepts us. He adopted us. He chose us to be his sons and daughters, and we live in his kingdom, and we thank you for that, Father, and we accept our place. We accept our identity as his sons and daughters, and we will walk in that identity that, that what he says about us is who we are, not what someone else says about us. Only what our daddy says about us is who we are. Thank you, Father. Father, you alone are who we desire. You alone are who we desire, Lord. We long for you, Abba, Father. We look to you, Lord. We reach out to grab your face and to kiss you tonight. God, we press into you tonight. God, I thank you that you opened the door because of what Jesus did on that cross. Lord, I thank you that you have torn the veil. I thank you, God, that we can ascend the heel of the Lord because of the cleansing power of the blood of the Lamb. So, Lord, I thank you. We ascend right now. We step up into you. We step up into the throne room. We come right now. We draw near to you, Abba. We step on in to your glory right now. We enter into your presence right now. Oh, God, would you come tonight in such a special way? God, would you manifest your kingdom? Would you manifest your goodness? Oh, God, you alone are worthy of all praise. You are the mighty one. You are the strong man. You are El Shaddai. You are more than enough for us, oh God. You are the cup of our blessing. You are our inheritance. You are our reward. You are our reward. Your presence is everything to us. You are everything to us. You mean so much to me. You mean so much to me. And God, I lift up my hands and I cry out, Abba. I cry out, Abba. I cry out, Papa. Papa, I want more of your spirit. More of your spirit tonight, God. Would you envelop us tonight, God? Would you wrap your arms around us tonight, God? Would you give us your affection tonight, Lord? I thank you for breakthrough tonight. I thank you for transformation tonight. Oh, God, I thank you for your glory in this room. I thank you there's no limitation. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that was revealed in Christ Jesus. I thank you every hurdle's been removed and every hindrance in the atmosphere. We take authority over you and we say make way for the King of glory. We say make way for the sons and daughters of God. We say shift now. We say submit yourself now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, every tongue will bow, every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for making a way to die.
have yet to hear, yet to hear the truth of your love, the truth of your word, your destiny for us is found in your arms, in your lap, in your chest, when you're kissing our forehead, when you're whispering in our ear, when you're telling us, this is who I always wanted you to be. We thank you, Father, that it doesn't matter who they say we are or who we even thought we ever were. When we crawl up in our daddy's lap, when we crawl up in your lap, Lord, then you are the one that whispers all the things that we've ever wanted to know. Everything that never made sense makes sense. Everything we couldn't see, it doesn't matter question disappears and we melt with you and we say yes Lord yes Lord do it again we thank you for the power and the might that is found in your lap Lord Father in Christ we ask for Hunt County tonight Father call them home Lord bring home your sons and daughters Father in all sincerity in all sincerity God in heaven I ask for Hunt County I ask for the sons and daughters who you declared were yours before the foundation of the earth. All those who were predestined to be conformed into the image of Christ Jesus. Father, I call them into the house of God, into your church, under your wing tonight, God, into the shadow of the Almighty, in the mighty name of Jesus, by the precious blood that poured from his veins and his until he was unrecognizable. All those who he looked upon into eternity and saw them would believe in him. I ask in faith, God, you said in 1 John that I have this confidence in you that when I pray that I would have what I receive. So I come into agreement with your own word, God, and by the Holy Spirit and the water and the blood that everyone who you predestined in Hyde County up to the church, God, not just to the church, Father, but to your Son, that they might know you, and Hot County shall be saved in Jesus' mighty name. Lift up your voice and lift up your raw sound and your raw cry from your spirit, not just from your mouth, not just from your mind, not even just from your emotions. I'm asking that we dig down.
excited about your presence tonight, Jesus. We're longing for more of you, Jesus. Come on, as we enter in and praise, come on, we have one desire to create a place for Jesus to dwell. Abba! Amen.
Oh, just one more time, just the voices sing. Our God reigns. Yes. And our God reigns forever. Your kingdom reigns. One more time, just like this, straight to the Lord. Sing. Our God reigns. And our God reigns. We declare your kingdom forever your kingdom reigns can we just lift up a shout of praise to jesus oh we give you glory here tonight jesus oh because you set us free Oh, we're dancing on the grave that once tried to hold us down. Freedom, freedom. We're going to declare a new song here tonight. And I'm dancing on the grave that once held me down. I'm dancing on the chains that are lying on the ground. I'm dancing out the dark. I'm lighting up the night. Your joy becomes my weapon. Let's sing it again. I'm dancing on the grave that once held me down. Dancing on the grave that come on and I'm dancing out the dark, I'm lighting up the night, your joy because one more time sing and I'm dancing on the grave that once held me bound. I'm dancing on the chains that are lying on the ground. I'm dancing out the dark, I'm lighting up the night, your joy becomes a weapon.
shadow lying on the ground. I'm dancing out the dark, I'm lighting up the night. Your joy becomes my weapon. Just sing out to the Lord just for a few moments right here. Just engage with him. Just stay right here. Just sing out to the Lord your own song just for a few moments.
Just sing out a thankful song to Jesus if you're thankful that he set you free. Come on. Brought me out of addiction. Brought me out of depression. Picked me up out the miry clay and put his spirit on the
of God is beginning to fall afresh over this house tonight, that the manifest kingdom of Yahweh, of Abba, is falling in the midst of a hungry people. Oh, and we don't have to strive. These things are the fruit of the manifest kingdom. The mountains quake before you. The demons run. Shaddai, our Rafa, our Jaira, our Creator, and yet you've called us as your people, your sons and your daughters, and you've said, I am your Father. Just lift your hands all across the room or whatever you want to do. Close your eyes. Just lock yourself in. We're about to go into a time of intercession and we're just going to spend some time praying and interceding. We're going to turn this house into a house of prayer for the next 30 minutes. I want to encourage you right now to just get out of your comfort zone, get out of your seat, and even in this room full of people, step over into your personal, private place with Abba. We're going to pray over some things corporately, but before we do that, I just want us personally lift up your cry to your Abba. Abba. 
He's birthing something in you. He is birthing something in you. He is birthing something in you. He is birthing something in you. You have conceived of a spirit, baby. And I want you right now to just connect in covenant with your Abba, with your heavenly Father. Rest on us. Rest on us. Rest on us, Abba. Rest on us, Abba. Rest on us, Abba. We have entered your courts with thanksgiving. We have entered your gates with praise. Right now we step through the doorway of Jesus Christ and we press in. We go I ask that the spirit of intercession blow through this house right now. Manifest yourself here in this room. Oh, that it would not just be like we are praying to some invisible thing. I ask, Abba, that you would make yourself known in a tangible way right now. Manifest your presence right now. Encounter your people, your sons and your daughters. person in this room cry out to your Abba. We don't need a song right now. Come on, just cry out to your Abba. He has made himself available to you. You are his favorite daughter. You are his favorite son. He is madly crazy in love with you. Let's bring the music down, please. Come on, from the front of the room to the back of the room, just press in. Even if this is new for you, it, it's so simple. It does not have to be complicated. Even if you just start out with just saying, I love you, I want you, I need you. I love you, I want you, I need you. I'm desperate for you. It doesn't have to be religious prayers. Please don't make it religious prayers. Just a heart of love for your Abba. Now, just for a moment, let him love on you. Some of you are about to experience freedom you've never experienced and joy, a peace you've never known and you've always ached for.
Some of you are seeing things with your spirit eye. Some of you are hearing things with your spirit ears. Some of you are smelling things in the spirit. His spirit is here in this room. Not just to be in this room, but to encounter you. It's from this place that we intercede. It's from this place that we pray and we minister to people. But it's not until we have ministered unto the Lord. <sighs> Thank you for your love, Abba. I ask right now that the people in this room carry this home with you. And I thank you for supernatural encounters tonight as they sleep in the early morning, as they awake. I thank you that you're encountering them with your presence and your manifest love, your agape love. Abba, I thank you for your kisses. I thank you that you are bringing your kids in so that you can love on us. We celebrate King Jesus. Thank you for this access. Thank you for the spirit that is inside of us. Just in your own words, just begin to give thanks. Thank you for this availability. I thank you that you speak to us and you choose to let us hear your heart. You choose to use us. You choose to partner with us. I thank you for filling us. If you've been asking for the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence in tongues, I just ask right now for a fresh filling. Holy Spirit. Abba loves you because you are his son and his daughter, not because you're his worker bee, not because you're his soldier, not because you are some role that he has given you, although those things are great and it's great to be a servant of the Lord. What a high honor. But that's not why he loves us. Abba, I thank you for these moments where we get to experience your love where we get to experience you. Help us to see ourselves rightly. Let's just pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus, and we ask you for Hunt County. You have given us this territory. You have placed us here as your kingdom ambassadors. And I thank you for this land. I thank you for influence in this place. I thank you that your kingdom is being established in Hunt County. Father, I thank you that your will is being done in Hunt County. Let the freedom that we are coming to know in this house be outbursted and outtaken out of these four walls. Let it come out of this place and flow into the streets of Hunt County. God, I ask that freedom, the spirit of freedom will arise in Hunt County. I thank you that deliverance and bondage 
will not be anymore in Hunt County. I thank you that chains are falling in Hunt County. I thank you that you are setting the captive free and it's starting in this house. You are bringing us into depths of freedom that we have yet to experience in this house. Let it bubble out. Let us be carriers of this freedom. Let us be carriers of your healing. Abba, let your kingdom come in fullness in our land. I thank you that there will be no sickness in this county. I thank you that there will be no demonic oppression in this county. That's a big ask. It is, but that's what heaven looks like. And we are commanded to pray on earth as it is in heaven. I thank you that that is how you see Hunt County. When you look down, you hear the cries of the bound. You hear the cries of the broken, but your destiny and your promise over Hunt County is freedom, it's righteousness, it's peace. That's what your kingdom looks like. I claim it for Hunt County and let us be your carriers that where we set foot, we will bring deliverance, we will bring freedom. Abba, I ask that through our intimacy with you, our shadow will heal the sick. I ask that through our intimacy with you and our love for you, our presence in the room will cause demons to manifest and flee. Let it be done in Jesus' name. Have your will. Let salvation come to Hunt County. Let salvation come to Hunt County. Pastor Caleb, will you come pray into lost souls being saved? Father, it says in your word in Revelation that Jesus has the keys of death and hell. So right now, as your, as your children, we take the keys that Jesus, our elder brother, gave to us as the church. We unlock right now in the name of Jesus. We unlock the ones that are captive. We unlock the ones that are bound. We command the doors to be open right now. Every prison door, we say be open in the name of Jesus right now. Lord, I thank you that every shackle falls off, every chain be removed. I thank you for revival fire coming into their spirits and awakening them and bringing them to life. God, I thank you for a sweeping of your presence. I thank you for the wind of God. I thank you for the breath of God. Father, we ask right now that you would blow into this county. We ask right now that the Ruach of God would be released from your throne, oh God. I thank you for scattering the enemy. Right now, Lord, your word says that the devil, the prince of this air, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. So right now, we reach into the spirit realm. We take the curtain that the enemy has placed on the mind, that deception and those lies right now. We take that curtain and we pull it down in Jesus' name. We say, see now in the name of Jesus. I thank you that the blind will see and the deaf will hear. We prophesy that now in the lives of those who have been blind and who have not heard. Lord, I thank you that starting tonight, as your word goes forth, as you release laborers into the harvest field, I thank you for a great harvest. I thank you for an openness. I declare openness over this county in the name of Jesus. I declare a yielding. I declare a yielding right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the, for the souls that are going to come into the kingdom. And Lord, I thank you it's going to be a quick work and a turnaround. It's going to be transformation in the moment. It's going to be transformation. And Lord, you're going to send them into the harvest fields. And they're going to begin to evangelize. They're going to begin to share their stories. God, I thank you for the testimonies in this church of the Samaritan women that are going to get radically touched by God. They're going to get saved. They're going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And they're going to go back into their hometowns, their workplaces, their home, and bring order and bring freedom and bring restoration and bring deliverance. God, I thank you for the men that were bound by the legion of demons as they came and submitted themselves to the Lordship of 
Jesus Christ. I thank you that you're going to use men in this church to be sent back to their workplaces. They're going to be sent back to their communities. And Lord, you're going to use them for deliverance. I prophesy that in the name of Jesus. I thank you for an anointing on this house for deliverance. And Lord, we embrace it. We ask for the anointing of deliverance to manifest and to come forth in Jesus' name. Chandler, will you come and pray against the religious mindset in people? Heavenly Father, thank you right now for Hunt County, Lord. I thank you that he who the sun sets free is free indeed, Lord. So we speak freedom over the minds of people who have been lied to by demonic spirits, Lord, especially the spirit of religion. You false devil, you liar and deceiver. You have no place in the lives of these people made in the image of God, purchased by the blood of his son, Jesus. You cannot exist in their minds any longer. We remove the blindfold. We show them this is Jesus, the one who died and lives again. Not the religion you've been taught, not the lies or the methods you've been taught, but the name of Jesus is alive and it lives with power and that power has come to you today. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you're touching the hearts and minds of people in Hunt County now, preparing their hearts to be good soil for the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Pastor Edwin to pray for the younger generations and there is a heavy strategic demonic attack on the young people and I'm going to ask us church if you pray for anything tonight partner with us and intercede with us for the future generations of this earth that the enemy will not have his way and there's an awakening and revival so let's pray into that. Lord God, right now we just exalt your name above every other name, Lord. Father, right now we lift up the now generation, this younger generation, and we say they will be lovers of Jesus. They will walk in full identity, that every attack against their identity has to bow at the name of Jesus that's lifted up high. We come against every identity attack, every false accusation, every generational curse every lie that says what they came out of is what they will stay we declare the destiny of heaven over the now generation we declare the destiny of heaven over the sons and daughters that you've ransomed and you paid with your blood God right now we even pray and I sense to pray that this gap between the generation goes that the young and the old will run together that the young will honor the old and the old will champion the young Right now, we speak to that gap right now that you're turning sons to their fathers and fathers to their sons. Let it be done. Let it start here, King Jesus. We love you. We honor you. Let's stay in the spirit of prayer for a few more minutes. Do you have the capacity to keep going just a little longer? Hallelujah. Is Angel in this room? Angel, will you come up and pray that revival would fall on the Hispanic community, the Latino community here in Hunt County? and that God would use this house, this house full of white people somehow to be a part of that. Father God, we just thank you, Father, for your sovereignty. Thank you, Father, that you are in control. Thank you, Father, that you have a plan set in place. Thank you, Father, that way, way back, Father, you have already ordained what is to come, Father, and by faith, we receive it. By faith, Father. Father, I, I have a special prayer, Father, for faith. Father, maybe you just increase faith in this place, Father. I thank you, Father, that your word says that we don't walk by sight, but we walk by faith, Father. Make that our reality, Father. Increase, Father, our faith. Thank you, Father, that your word says that you take us from glory to glory, Father. Thank you for this opportunity to glorify you here and now, my Lord. 
I thank you, Father, that you're going to deliver us from this place into a greater place of more glory unto you, Father God. Expand our horizons, Father. I pray for the Hispanic community, Father God, that they will come out of the hiding, Father, that they will come above the oppression, Father, that you would deliver them, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that they will see the mountaintop, Father God, that they will see a greater place of glory unto you, my Lord, that you would pave the way for them, Father God. Do what only you can do in the Hispanic community, Father, in the black community, in the white community, Father. Do what only you can do, Father God. My Lord, and, and I, my prayer is that here in Hunt County, my Lord, that we would set the standard, that we would set the example, Father God, that you would do it in us and through us, Father God. My Lord, the enemy has used uh, the oppression of the vision for far too long, my Lord. And in the name of Jesus, we just rebuke that strategy, Father. And we say your will be done, Father, on earth as it is in heaven, Father. We are all your creation. We are all your children, Father. And we say, no more to division in the name of Jesus. We say to, hello to unity, Father. Now to unity, Father, for your glory, Father. Why do these things have to happen? Your word says that your glory will be revealed. And so, Lord, we receive it and we walk it out, Father. Show us how to walk it out, my Lord. Your word says that, that, work, that faith without works is dead, Father. I pray that you would give us the livest form of faith that we've ever seen here and now. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Hallelujah. Let's just lift up the spirit of unity. We don't need to clap when people pray. Come on, we're praying. Get up on your feet right now because if we sit down, I guess we think we're watching somebody pray. So we're not gonna clap when we're in intercession. I love you, but it's just, hey, somebody said that the Bible says an open rebuke is better than hidden loves. I'm loving you. This is not, this is not something we're watching. This is something we're part of. We lift up the spirit of unity in Hunt County that every race, every color will come together and this house will look like heaven. I thank you that every community, every tribe and tongue that is represented in this house, uh, in this community will come together. I specifically lift up the Texas A&M Commerce facility and I thank you for every country represented there and every skin color there and I say come and be a part and commune with us if you want to because this is what heaven will look like the spirit of unity hallelujah hallelujah I think we have time to press into one more thing we're gonna wrap up this time before pastor comes up with with the word and we are gonna press in and intercede for the marriages and the family units of Hunt County, yes, but of this house first. Because if the enemy can't get us jacked up and involved in sin, he will try to come in and bring division and distraction into our home, into our family unit. Chris, I'm gonna ask you, are you able to set that guitar down just for a little moment? I know it might sound different than this moment right here, but that's okay. I, I feel strongly that you are the person most involved with the marriages of this house. And I want you to just release the oil from heaven, but we only have four minutes. So release the oil in four minutes and pour out your soul and intercession for the marriages and the families of this house. we just thank you for the perfect model of Christ and his bride Father we just thank you for a soft heart God I come against every hard heart, calloused heart Father soften it God we lay it on the altar God we just put our flesh on the altar God we serve you and you alone Father bring us in bring us in closer to you God that we lay everything at the altar, nothing comes close to the altar. It's all about you. It's all about you, Father. I just thank you. Generational curses are gone, wiped away, cleaned by the blood. Father, we thank you 
generational curses do not exist in this home. God, I thank you for exposure. Father, I thank you right now that every lie of the enemy is being exposed right now in Jesus' name. God, we welcome you in our homes. We invite you in. We give you permission, Father, to, to take control of us, Father, just to, to speak to us openly. Lord, we just thank you, and it's just an honor, Father, to be in your presence. Lord, we love you. We love you, God. We just want you first. We want more of you, Father. Lord, we just thank you for unity at the home. Unity at home, Father. Unity. Unity, Father. Lord, we just thank you that the spirit that is here is at home. Father, we just thank you for blessed marriages, blessed generations. Father, I just thank you for your, your hand over every home. Lord, we just love you. We thank you, God. We just declare healthy and whole marriages and healthy and whole homes, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Lord. What we're doing tonight is what I want you to come expecting to do every Wednesday. And that's worship and prayer. And it's time that the body of Christ be the body of Christ. This is what the body does. You know, I love the definition I heard of intercession. It's simply coming to agreement with what Jesus has already bring. It's not this like super hyped up spiritual thing. You're just simply coming into agreement with what Jesus is already praying. And if the head's praying it, the body needs to be in sync and praying the same thing. Amen? Amen. Well, listen, let's transition and get ready for the word. And I want you to find somebody and just, just love on them for a moment. Don't make it weird, but just say, hey, you know, don't like whisper in their ear and make it super awkward. Just be yourself. Money talk tonight is going to be very simple. Most of you already know how to give. And so you can give your tithes. If you came ready to do that, you can give offerings. Just listen to the Holy Spirit throughout the service as to what God would have you so extra. Um, and if he indeed puts, puts that on your heart to do so, just be obedient. And um, we got baskets down here. You can give anytime during the service tonight. And then you can give on your way out. So there's money talk. Sound good? Amen. Any manipulation in that? Yeah. All right, good deal. Sweet. Um, I want you to go with me in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm, I'm going to tie together the mandate for this house and one of the main elements on how we're going to sustain the, the glory of the Lord. Tonight I'm going to tie together one of the key elements that is fundamental and foundational for us to be able to sustain the glory of God, for Abba to come and dwell, for his glory to come and be with us. I mean, how many ways can I word it to get more amens? Um, to... <laughs> I'm joking. I won't go on. But you get the point. This is it's so much bigger than how most of us have been raised. What God is doing What God is doing and what he's wanting to do is, is, is so much bigger than most people's concept or many people's concept of like church and, and Christianity and Christianese. And, and we've been talking about the kingdom 
How many of you guys were here on Sunday talking about the kingdom and how the first message Jesus ever preached was repent for the kingdom of heaven's at hand. And one of the last messages he preached was the kingdom. And then throughout his journey, his main message was the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is an invisible kingdom, but to help us kind of put it, to, to, to help put it into terms that will help hopefully kind of give you a grasp a little bit better, the kingdom of heaven is a country. It's a country. It's not just heaven that, that many people think of. You know, one day when we all die and go to heaven, all fly away, oh glory. Like, you know, Jesus, hurry up and come back or, you know, or take me now. Just this world's getting darker. I don't want to be here. I want to be in heaven. Like, the, the whole concept of heaven, I like what I heard Mike Murdoch say. He said Christians or the church, not Christians, but the church, the church, is not, the, the church does not exist for heaven. The church exists for the earth. <laughs> Are you with me? When, when, when Apostle Paul says that we're ambassadors, he, he literally means you're an ambassador of a different country. And if you know anything about an ambassador, an ambassador has access to the wealth of the country that it's a part of. It's, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not just like this imaginary thing that one day we'll experience... I mean, we'll experience it, of course, when we, when we die this physical, you know, from this physical body. But God is, is literally wanting his reality to exist in the earth. I just had this thought just a moment ago during service where the Bible says that God wants to fill the whole glory with his earth. I'm sorry, fill the whole earth with his glory. But the Bible says the glory is within us. So does that mean that God wants every single person to be saved and filled with his glory? Is, is that his definition? I just wonder, is it a sovereign thing where the, where the glory cloud comes in and fills the whole? It could be that as well. But I do know he wishes that none should perish. I do know that. And I just wonder if my, my, my imagination of this, this glory cloud filling the entire earth I wonder if that's really not what it is. Maybe it is, but I, I, wonder if it's, I wonder if it's also every human being to be born again and, and the whole earth is filled with his glory through humanity. I just wonder. I'm not a theologian on that, so don't come and ask me questions because I won't really, I'll just be able to direct you to the word what Paul says about the glory. Like, I can take you there and then you can chew on it yourself. I'm not going to die on that, on, that, on that doctrine, if you will. But it's just a thought. And I just I want to bring something in that I believe the Holy Spirit shared with me that he wants me to just teach tonight. And um, I'm not going to be that weird guy that's like, is it okay if I teach? You know, Is it all right if I teach? You guys good if I teach? Is it all right if I teach a little bit? It's like, dude, just teach. Just do what you're supposed to do. Is it all right if I preach a little bit? I'm like, I'm like a little preachy. Just do what you're supposed to do, my man. You know what I mean? It'd be like a firefighter showing up to put out a... Is that all right if I put that fire out? Is that all right? Is that all right if I put that fire out? I can't put the fire out. Is that okay if I put the fire out? You guys good if I put the fire out? It'd be like I've had Manny build me a house and he shows up. Can I build you a house? Okay. Yes, that's why I hired you. Please come build me a house. Just do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Um, I want to talk about I want to talk about something that is uh, is 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 a part of the culture of Oasis, and you stepped into this culture tonight, and it's going to only increase. You may not have, you, you may not be aware that this is the culture yet, but you're you're, you're gonna you're gonna hear me talk about this tonight, and it's I've I've, I've preached on it and, and 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 taught on it in years past, but it's been a while since I've actually taken a service and actually just taught on this and uh, shared my heart on it and shared the heart of the house, but it's more important than just the heart of Oasis. This is kingdom culture. When you think of the kingdom of heaven, I, I, I want you to filter everything now through the, the kingdom message. When you, when you think of everything now, I want you to filter it through the kingdom message. 
when you read the word, filter it through the, through the lens of kingdom. Because kingdom, it's, it's the country that we're actually now citizens of. We're actually a part of this country called the kingdom of heaven. You, you're first the kingdom of, you're, you're first a citizen of heaven before you're a citizen of any country in the earth. You're, you're, you're actually called to identify with heaven first over any other country. So more, more than an American or Mexican or, or, or African or Asian, whatever, you're actually a citizen of heaven, and it's the blood of Jesus that unites us all as brothers and sisters. So I like what I heard a pastor say in Little Rock when a lady came up to him, a very large church in Little Rock, Assembly of God Church, and she said, Pastor, we need to reach more black people. He said, how about we just reach people? How about we just reach people? And the church is open to anybody. How, how, how about we just reach anybody who, who wants to come? We need to become more multicultural. I can't make that happen. You can't make that happen. Only, only the Holy Spirit can make that happen. Only, only Jesus can build his church the way he wants to build his church. You can't make people come to church. I don't know if you've ever tried that. Except for your children. You can't beat them into submission duct tape their hands and feet and mouth just so they're not yelling on the way to church. You can make them come. But I want to talk about this topic. I want to talk about what is a spiritual father and mother and what is a spiritual son and daughter. That's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about what is a spiritual father and mother and what is a spiritual son and daughter. We call... We call God, God. We call him, we, we, he, has, he has many names. Is he God? Absolutely. Can you, can you say, when you talk to God, oh God, hear my prayer? Absolutely. Can you, can you, can you call him El Shaddai? Absolutely. Can you call him Yahweh? Sure. Can you call him Jaira? 100%. You can call him whatever name you want to call him. But God's a nature his nature is father. His nature is father. You can call him whatever you want to call him, but Jesus called him father. Jesus said, pray this way, Father, may your name be kept holy. Not Jireh, not El Shaddai, not Yahweh not Elohim, but he said, Father, he called him Father. Jesus is our elder brother. Jesus came to take care of what the first Adam messed up. Jesus, Jesus is the first fruit of everybody in this room who's given their life to Jesus and who knows how many other people since Jesus came and died and was resurrected and went back to heaven. What's the culture of heaven? Is there protocol in the kingdom? Absolutely. Is there honor and submission and all that? Absolutely. That's why Satan got kicked out, because he stepped out of order. He allowed sin to come into his heart. So it's the, But the culture of heaven is family. The culture of heaven is family. It's family. And here's the challenge with many people, and maybe some in this room. Your experience with earthly family is jacked up. So it's hard for you to connect the dots with kingdom family. Matter of fact, when you think of family, you might, you might have a trigger. That might be a trigger word for you. And you're trying your best right now to create a family culture in your house that you didn't have. And it's, it's tough to create a family culture in your own home that you didn't have. It's, it's, tough to, it's tough to model something you haven't seen. It's challenging. It's not easy. You may say, well, what do you know about family? I, I, had a great fa- I have a great family. I have a great family. Many of you guys know my family. If you're new here, my pastor's. Our, our senior pastors, Apostle Barney and Pastor Senior, they're my biological parents. They're amazing. They live what they preach. 
they're authentic, they're genuine. And I just, I haven't had a perfect upbringing, but it's not far from it. I've, I've had an amazing upbringing. And I'll say I have to brag, that's just, that's just the family God placed me in. I didn't choose my family. God chose my family for me. And you didn't choose your family. He chose your family for you. So you can't be jealous of other people's family, and you can't be timid to, to, to uh, share if you, had a, if you have a great family. You can't, you, you, can't, you can't walk around back, well, I don't want to, you know, cause anybody to be jealous. Or, no, man, like, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. If you came from a great family, that's a blessing. Talk about your family. Give honor to whom honors do. Honor your father and mother that it may go well with you and you'll live a long life. Absolutely. So I, I want to talk about this. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 4 for a moment. And um, I want, I, I, I'm, I'm going to give some characteristics of what a spiritual father is, and I'm going to give some characteristics of what a spiritual son and daughter are. And I just I, I want to let you know that as we're, as we're establishing the kingdom of heaven, I want to remind you of, of the word of the Lord through an encounter my wife had with Abba. It was, I'll be able to come and dwell when my kingdom is established. He visits us. I mean, his presence is here tonight. But there's a, there's a coming dwelling of the glory of God that's, that without taking a lot of time, it's supernatural, but you'll, you'll know. You'll, you'll know. I mean, right now, this atmosphere can be a lot for people in Hunt County. Just this atmosphere alone. Just the presence of God. My wife and I, had an encounter with a lady Saturday that we, uh, we signed up for something that we slept on Saturday night, and then Sunday I woke up, and we both didn't have a piece about what we signed up for, so we, we drove back out to where we signed up at this, this place, uh, this thing, and uh, dr- drove back out there. It was over in Irving, and we canceled what we signed up for. And, but the lady who, who, who works there, we were in her office, and as we're – as we're talking to her, I felt like I was supposed to minister to her. And this lady's probably like in her 60s or something, 50s or 60s. And, and I felt like I was supposed to minister to her Saturday while we're in there. And we're, we're there just, uh, it's, it's a business transaction at this point, Manny. I mean, it's just, we're just there. And, and so I, uh, I left. We, we didn't, I, didn't, I didn't minister to her. And, uh, but I think she knows that we're pastors. And uh, she works in Irving but lives right here in Commerce out of all the places. She lives right here in Hunt County. And uh, drives a long way to work. And, um, but then Sunday when we went after church, um, after just that amazing, glorious service that happened Sunday, God's so good. We drove out there, and she meets us out in the lobby. And, um, and then she, uh, long story short, at the, end, at, at the end of our transaction there, she comes back out. We signed the cancellation paper. And then, she, and then she says this. Now, I didn't minister to her. My wife didn't minister to her. I, I think she knows we're pastors. But that, that's basically the extent of our relationship is business. And then we had some, you know, whatever small talk we had the day before. She says this. In her own words, something to the effect of, yesterday when you guys were here, you spoke to me. In other words, there's something that you carried that ministered to me. Her words. And she said, I have not told many people this or maybe anybody, and she began to tell us something going on in her body, and she starts tearing up in the lobby of this, of this place, this, this place of business. And she says, if you'll just keep me in your prayers. And so I said, how about we pray right now? So my wife and I held hands with her and prayed to her and ministered to her, believing that this issue in her body is, is taken care of. We didn't say a word, though, but she, there's, because we carry kingdom, because, because the kingdom of God is with them, because we carry it, she, she couldn't articulate it. She, she, she couldn't articulate it. Like, it's like what I was saying on Sunday. People, uh, there's a guy who came in a while ago. He said, man, that, your, your place has good vibes. Good vibes there. I told you the story about the one dude who left one service, and on his way out, he said, that was effing awesome. He just, the, the, the world, they don't know how to articulate the presence. So this, for a lot of people, is a lot. This for a lot of people is a lot. But when the glory shows up, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be too much for us. 
It's going to be so much that the most righteous, holy Christian in the room won't be able to say a word, which will be my wife. So, but I just want to take a few moments, and I want to talk about, though, that God is a father, and he, and he raises up earthly spiritual fathers and mothers in the earth to help establish kingdom culture. The culture, when you think of the culture of the kingdom of heaven, what do you think of? You don't think of sin and perversion and wickedness. You think of love, joy, peace, righteousness. I mean, you just think of bliss. You think of just this place of like, there's no sin, no crime, no drugs, no addiction, no perversion. It's a perfect place. That's what heaven is. Heaven is a perfect place. No sins allowed there. There's no shadow there. Jesus, God is light. It's completely filled with light. I mean, it's just colors that we haven't even experienced on this side of eternity. I mean, I've, I've heard, and I, I can't back this biblically necessarily. I'd have to process if I could. But I've heard you get to a place in heaven by the speed of thought. Interesting thought there. Not going to die on that hill either, but it's just it's getting you thinking at least, you know. Religion would say, "Well, prove it, brother, in the word." I I, I don't know that I can. I've just that's what I've heard. I, it's great. It's a great thought. We've all heard of people dying and going to heaven, and they have this encounter, and God sends them back in their body, and they experience some pretty amazing things in heaven, and that's awesome, man. I celebrate that. That's great. But what about now? What about for you and I, who's here, who God says you're ambassadors, and I've called you to establish the kingdom in the earth? What about us? They're, they're a part of the great cloud of witnesses championing us on, the Bible says. They're cheering us on. They're saying, go get it. Go make it happen, man. It's real. I'm, I'm living in the country that you're, that you're an ambassador to establish right now. And they're just up there loving the presence of not just God. And it's no disrespect to him being God. He's our father. His nature is father, not dad. Not pops, not the big man upstairs, father. He didn't call him dad. Dad, let your name be kept holy. He called him father. There's a difference between being a dad and being a father. Now, I'm not here to get caught up into, like, I, I get through the same thing, but I hope you hear my heart here. There's dads and there's fathers. Every single one of you. You came from a dad and a mom, but not every one of you came from a father and a mother. Every one of you, you have a dad, whether you ever met him or not. And I'm, I, I, my, my, heart, my heart breaks for people who don't know their biological parents. But every one of us, we have a dad and we have a mom. That's how God brought us. Unless you're Jesus and you just came through one woman from the Father in heaven, every one of you, you have a dad and you have a mom. But not everybody has a father and a mother. And I just, I just want to help us tonight on what does it mean. Because some of you are called to be spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers. Why? To help establish the kingdom of heaven and the earth. All of us. All of us are sons and daughters. For God so loved the world that he sent his only king, sent his only soldier, for God so loved the world that he sent his only prayer warrior, intercessor, prophet, apostle, teacher, pastor, greatest evangelist, no, for God so loved the world, he sent his only son. Every time the father showed up when Jesus was walking the earth, every time he called him son. On the Mount of Transfiguration, he says, hey, boys, listen to my son. When he got baptized, this is my son. Why did, why did the father sow a son? To reap, you reap what you sow. To reap sons and daughters. Not prayer warriors. 
not soldiers, not generals, not apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. He's, he's wanting sonship. It's, and apostles are a great title, wouldn't you agree? A prophet. That's, that's a great title, wouldn't you agree? I mean, to, to be called to be a prophet or an apostle or a, a, one of the fivefold ministries. In Ephesians, that the Bible says that Jesus gives, the, those are the gifts to the body of Christ. And those fivefold ministries, what do they do? They equip the saints for the work of their ministry. So I'm a pastor. So one of my, my main responsibility outside of my relationship with the Lord and taking care of my wife and my family, when I mean taking care of, I mean, I mean, I mean like, not, not just providing, but actually like, that's a part of it, but actually like making sure like emotionally and spiritually they're healthy. That's what I mean. Not, not just being a provider husband, like to really actually be engaged, you know. But outside of that, my main responsibility is to equip you for what God's called you to do, not for you to watch me do what God's called me to do. Your job is not to watch me do what I'm called to do. Your job is to be provoked by what I'm called to do. To provoke you into doing what you're called to do. That's my, if I'm not provoking you, if I'm not challenging you, if I'm not pushing you, if you don't leave here offended at me sometimes, I'm not doing my job. My job is for you, for your flesh to be a little ticked off every time we gather. All from a place of love, though. All, all from this place of love. It's my job. But even though that's a great, that's a, I'm, I'm a part of the five-fold ministry. It's an honor. But can I tell you what I am when I'm alone with Abba? I'm a son. Can I tell you what I am right now to Abba? I'm a son. I function as a pastor to you. I do not function as a pastor to him. I'm not Pastor Lindsay to Abba. When he calls me, whew. He didn't say, Pastor Lindsay, come here, I need to have a meeting with you. But how many of us go to the Lord with our functions and titles, thinking God's impressed when he's like, dude, I already, I already bought that with the blood. I'm not... I'm not impressed with that. I, I gave that to you so you could actually be equipped to do what you're, you're called to do. When, when you go to heaven, he's not going to say, oh, intercessor Maria, come on down. Builder Manny, come on up. Mighty couple. Mighty man of God. Drummer Jonas, come on down. He's going to call you son and he's going to call you daughter. That is the essence of the kingdom of heaven, is family. You have to get this. And you have to let the Holy Spirit rewire your brain if you were raised in an, in an unhealthy family. I don't say that lightly. This is the challenge many people have to see God as their father. They're, they're good calling him God. They're good calling him El Shaddai. But what does a father do? Can we talk about this? 1 Corinthians 4, um, verse, let's go to verse 14. He says, I'm, I'm not writing these things to shame you but to warn you as my beloved children. For even, so this is Apostle Paul writing, for even if you had 10,000 others to teach you about Christ, you have only one spiritual father. For I became your father in Christ when I preached the good news to you. So I urge you to imitate me. And then he says this. He says, that's why I've sent Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord. Or you could say son, he will remind you of how, I follow, of how I follow Christ, Jesus, just as I teach in all the churches wherever I go. So here you have in the word, you may say the only, the only father is the father in heaven. That's not biblically accurate. Because Paul himself, he's calling himself a spiritual father. 
to the church of Corinth. And he's having, if you read this, which we're not, we're, I'm not going to take time because I don't want to take away from the, from the meat of tonight. But if you'll read in the beginning of that chapter all the way, what he's doing is he is talking as a father would to his own children. It is a, it is a harsh rebuke to his own children. He is having a heart-to-heart -heart as a father would to their own son or daughter. And then he says, you have many teachers. You have many people who can teach you the word, many people who can instruct you on things of the kingdom of heaven, but you do not have many fathers. And this is what we have in America. We have many pastors. We have many leaders, apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers. And we should honor every single one of them that are in those amazing offices that Jesus says, I give these gifts to the body. So if you're called to be in any one of those five-fold offices, you are actually the gift that Jesus sends as the head of the church to the body. And that's how every single minister should be received. And that's why Jesus says, if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you get the prophet's reward. It's the same for all five-fold. There's, 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 uh, uh, that's a principle. There's that. That's a print. There's a principle in that. And I thank God for all of those offices. That's great. But there's a deeper relationship with the Lord that He's wanting to bring Oasis Church Cattle Mills in on. And it's deeper than intercessor. It's deeper than. Apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, or evangelist. It's deeper than greeter, usher, worship team member, member of Oasis, member of this church. It's deeper than parking lot uh, 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 you know, team member. It's deeper than any kind of ministry that we have. It's, it's family. It's kingdom family. And it all starts, it all starts with how you see your heavenly father. It, it all begins there because if you are, if your perspective is off with how you see him, your perspective will be off with how you see leaders that God has brought into your life. Or I should say, I should say to, 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 to be more accurate, I should say if your perspective is off with your heavenly father, your perspective will sure be off to any spiritual father or mother that God brings into your life. You may be good with a leader, but what if that leader, what if God's called them to be a spiritual father to you? What if God's brought a spiritual mother into your life to help mother you ladies? Even some men in the room. You know a man can have a spiritual mother? I'm very blessed to have my parents... As my, as, as my spiritual father and spiritual mother. I'm very blessed to have that. And I lean into my spiritual father. He's not just my dad. I listen to his wisdom. I listen to his counsel. I'm growing and being slow to speak. Quick to listen. What are you trying to teach me here? What are you trying to show me here? It's a deeper relationship, and this relationship re requires a word that my wife, God's been bringing her in on, and God's been using her to minister to me in this, in this word. It's, 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 it's two words, really, but, 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 but they have the same, the same heartbeat. You ready? Covenant and communion. Covenant and communion. It's deeper. It's deeper. To be, to be in communion with somebody and to be in covenant with somebody, it's deeper than just to see them as, well, that's just one of my leaders. That you, that you may very well, I mean, we have key leaders in this house. We got staff. We have, 
We've got Pastor Edwin, Pastor Caleb. We've got, we've got many people in this house. We've got Apostle Barney, Pastor Cindy. We've got elders. We have, we have all kinds of leaders in Oasis. And there's people here you connect with more than even connecting with me. There's people that you're in relationship deeper than you are with me. And this message is not, hear me, this message is not to provoke myself to get you thinking, is Lindsay trying to become my spiritual father? Because that's not how it works. This message is not see me as your spiritual father or see Pastor Jody. I'm trying to manipulate you to see Pastor Jody as your spiritual mother. That's not how this works. Those relationships can literally happen from like Chris and Janae who, who oversee our, our, our premarital and even marriage counseling. You may, you may go into a session with them and come out thinking, I think he's supposed to be my spiritual father. It only works, it only works through relationship. And, 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 and it's, it's a divine connection. There'll be a witness in your spirit. And here's the deal. Here's, here's the deal. You have to want that relationship from somebody. You, you, ha- you have to see the value in it and you have to want it. But you also have to know the responsibility that comes with it. Many people have died and gone to heaven and struggled to see God as their father because they put their faith in Jesus and they, they believed that he died on the cross and was rose from the, from, from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. I mean, the man on the cross, he didn't have much time to think about his heavenly father. I mean, he's just there, and Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. I mean, that's a quick turnaround. He wasn't, like, going through, now, Jesus, who could be my spiritual father before I die real quick? He wasn't processing all of that. I, I, could, I could almost guarantee you, unless just supernaturally somehow is infused into his mind, you know. I, he's hanging on a cross, I and mean, he's in a lot of pain. Something just blew out of our vent. It's not gold. Look like a dead bug. God, what are you trying to say? That must be a prophetic sign, right? Hey, that was gold. I'd be all about that, though. Diamonds and rubies. Everybody gets up, everybody. Cash it in. Or not. Probably hang on to that. That's pretty special. Unless you have a lot of it, you know, maybe that's why God did it. You have to pray about it yourself. Let the Holy Spirit tell you. Anyways, totally off topic. How about this? Let's get back to the main topic. These are the thoughts that go on in my brain. So I, sometimes I process out loud and realize that was the wrong thing to say. Spiritual fathers and mothers, you have many teachers, but you don't have many fathers. Now watch this. Many people deal with an orphan spirit. Many people deal with an orphan spirit. I'm going to try to talk about that some. I want to give you some characteristics real quick of, um, uh, of what a spiritual father and mother is and some characteristics of what a spiritual son and daughter are. And then I want to give you some characteristics of, of what an orphan spirit um, is. And, um, and then just see, just, see, just see what the Holy Spirit would say to you. To see what the Holy Spirit would speak to you. You know, I, let me just bring you to my world for a minute. You may say, man, it must be easy for you because your parents are your pastors and, and, man, you've had a great Christian family growing up, and that just must be easy for you. Let me tell you, I'm sure it's been easy compared to most, but it hasn't been easy for me. Does that make sense? I'm sure it's been easy compared to a lot of people, but it hasn't been easy for me. It's been very much intentional. It's been very much, it's been very much hot. We, we have a thing here called hot conversations. Everybody say hot conversations. That, that doesn't mean like you start taking your clothes off to have a conversation when you get hot. What that means is, okay, really? Y'all are going to be like that? You're going to be weird? Like, how dare he say that? Come on. Okay, whatever. All right. That's fine. You can be cold to me. That's okay. I still love you. How dare he talk about taking clothes off in church? What, I, what, what we say is honest, open, and transparent. 
to help all the religious minds. Honest, open, and transparent. Or maybe you just didn't think it was funny. That's fine, too. Maybe I'm a terrible comedian. Honest. Say that. Say honest, open, transparent. Honest, open, and transparent. I've had many of those with my dad. I've had many of those with my dad as it relates to ministry. I don't, I don't have time to get into really even one conversation I've had with him that I'm thinking about. But it's, it's very much real, authentic, raw, tears, intensity. Half of the church wouldn't be able to handle conversations like that. You know why? Because they don't have the right perspective of their Heavenly Father. They're too easily offended. They're jaded. They're hurt. They're wounded. They're bleeding out. They need healing. They need help. They're like a dog trapped in a, in a, in a bear snare, and you try to help them, and the dog thinks you're there to hurt them again. This is the culture that God's called us to, to bring from heaven. You know what Hunt County needs? They don't just need a miracle. They need a father. They, they need a father. I'm talking about their heavenly father. They, they need to know who he really is. And they need to see spiritual fathers and mothers in this house modeling that. Can I give you some characteristics that I just thought of? I mean, they're all, they're all good. My dad embodies all of these. I was probably thinking of him when I was piecing this together. Are you ready? Number one, loving. Loving. Will you go with me in your Bibles over to, uh, when I get there, I'll tell you. If you're prophetic, try to beat me there. Will you, will you go over there with me to, um, just flip over a few pages to chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians. I always get confused between first and second of which one this is in. The Bible says God is love. You could say this, the Father is love. And if the Father is love, which we know he is, because the word of God says he is, then the Bible also tells us what love is. So if you want to word it this way, where, where there's love, just put the word Father. You want to know the characteristic of your heavenly Father, this is him. And it may, be, it may be different from how you were raised, but this is what you have to allow the Holy Spirit to gently help you with. And he's very gentle. Very gentle. Are you ready? The Father is patient, and the Father is kind. The Father is not jealous. The Father is not boastful. The father is not proud or rude. The father does not demand his own way. The father is not easily irritable. You don't, you don't easily irritate the father. I just, I just don't want to bother him. I just don't want to. Some of you are raised in a home where when dad would come home, if you try to talk to him, he'd bark at you and snap at you. And it just was branded in your brain that you bothered your dad. You were an annoyance. You were in the way. But your heavenly father does not feel that way about you at all. The father keeps no record of being wronged. The father does not rejoice about injustice. <laughs> he doesn't rejoice about injustice. I'm not crying for me. I'm crying for some of you. Some of you have had unjust parents, and God's not up there celebrating that. Your heavenly father did not approve of that. That was not the father's will for your parents to go through a divorce. I've heard it said, 
you know, it was the Father's will for my parents to split, and that made me who I am today. That was never the Father's will for you. That, that was never God's will. Now, the Father hates divorce, the Bible says. How could he hate something and yet it be his will? He, he, he very well may have used that to make you into the person you are today, but just make sure your heart's tender and you don't, you don't confuse confidence with a calloused heart. I'm just bold because, you know, how to be bold. I, are you sure it's boldness or is it just like you're so afraid of getting hurt that you come across very bold, but deep down you're hurting and wounded and dealing with an orphan spirit. So we, we put these walls up. So the father doesn't rejoice about injustice but he rejoices whenever the truth wins out. The father never gives up. Some of you need to hear this. The father never loses faith in you. The father is always hopeful for you, and the father always endures through every circumstance. He's always there with you. Always. He endures. He doesn't leave you when times get tough for you. He's right there with you. So the first characteristic of the father is that he's loving. Now, that's the same thing with a spiritual, with a spiritual earthly dad. Now, we know earthly fathers are not perfect like their heavenly father. You, you, can't, you can't compare an earthly father completely to, a heavenly, to, to our heavenly father. It, it just, that will jack you up mentally. You just have to know earthly fathers are still men. Earthly mothers are still women. And they have come from backgrounds and upbringings that God's still working on them. All right? I remember I was in a conversation with somebody, and I was struggling with how my dad would respond to me sometimes. And I wanted him to respond to me a certain way. Anybody relate? Yeah? And... I remember this minister I was talking to who, who knows my dad very well. He said, Lindsay, you just need to give your dad the grace to be himself. And I didn't like his response. Now, most of you, or a lot of you know my dad, you know, you, you know who he is. You may not know him personally, but you know who he is. Very gracious man. A very loving man. Very loving man. Very loving man. So the way that the way that his dad was raised, my grandpa, my grandpa was raised by his father was an alcoholic but had the call of ministry on his life. And he would, he would preach, but he struggled with alcohol. And he would come home, and I believe he would, he would come in like in a rage. And so that caused my grandfather to not be as loving to my dad and his sister and brothers growing up until later on in life. Well, by the time grand, grandkids came along, he was very loving. This is the granddad I was telling you about that God gave me a dream about the other night. And he was a minister, and he didn't struggle with alcohol, but he had to learn to be loving. He had to learn to communicate. And my dad has been super loving since the day I've been born. Super loving. So I was raised in a culture of love. My dad and I would kiss each other. My dad and I... We had a very loving relationship. I was able to cuddle with him. I know that sounds weird probably to some of the men in the room, but we would kiss each other. When I was a kid, we'd kiss each other on the lips. I kiss my boys on the lips to this day. It's loving. It's, it's the culture. It's, it's, now, when they get older, obviously, <laughs> obviously things are going to change. My son Hudson already is embarrassed to kiss me on the lips when he's at school. I don't blame him, he's nine, but, you know, he'll kiss me on the cheek. But that was the culture I was raised in. To this day, I tell my dad I love him, he tells me he loves me. Very loving. He didn't get that until he was in college. But he adapted quickly to create the culture of the kingdom in his house. So, very loving, 
but also not perfect. And he would tell you that he's not perfect. Can you believe it? I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. So what we have to do is we cannot say, well, I don't want that relationship because they're not perfect. Because you're holding them to a standard they cannot walk out. So you have to give them room to be themselves. So when this minister told me, give him grace to be himself. Give him grace to respond however he wants to respond. And I don't know when it was, Pastor Caleb, but there was a moment where, I don't even know if there was a moment. It just kind of, Holy Spirit helped me to see my dad's heart, and his heart has always been pure. I can tell you this. There is no perfect spiritual father in the earth, but I will tell you this. There are a lot of spiritual fathers whose hearts are pure. That goes a long way, a very long way, a pure heart. Maybe, maybe, the, response, maybe the response isn't what you thought it was going to be, but their heart behind the response is pure. Does that make sense? So, so let me get through this. I feel like I'm really hitting something with, with, with the body tonight, with us tonight. I, I'm, I'm really sensing it strong. There's such a grace in the room right now. Because God's getting us ready. God's getting us ready for his glory. This is what he's doing. Whew. The second characteristic of a spiritual father or spiritual mother is simply this. They're patient. They're patient, Manny. My dad's been so patient with me. He's so patient with me. So patient with me. I'm telling you right now, he's just so patient. He threatened to fire me one time after he was patient with me for a long time. I'm telling you, I told you we've had hot conversations. You think it's just this perfect relationship. Oh, father and son, they're in ministry together. How awesome and cute and adorable. And oh, man, I want my sons and daughters to be like that and all that. Maybe you don't. I don't know, but. It has to be a God thing. Don't, the only reason I'm here is because God's called me here. If God didn't call me here, I wouldn't be here and my dad wouldn't want me here. That's the, that's the truth right there. That's just the God honest truth. God called me from Florida after I graduated high school, went to a church internship down there for a semester for three and a half months, and God called me back. And the word of the Lord is still the same today as it was then. And the simple word of the Lord for me in that season was go back and serve your dad. And that has not changed. Go back and serve your dad. And through that, through that, ministry has come. And more ministry is on the horizon for me and for my wife. My wife's very, she's a very blessed woman to be married to me. I told her that the other day. It's her honor. I like having fun with her. However, it's the word of, go back and serve your dad. And can I tell you, at the end of the day, you know what my assignment is? Not to pastor you. Don't, don't be offended at me. Can I tell you what my assignment is? To serve my dad. Because that's the mandate of the Lord for my life right now. And I have a feeling it's going to be for the rest of my life. So he said, Lindsay, I think you're ready. I think you're the one to go, you and your wife, to go and pastor this campus out here. Go serve your dad. If he said, Lindsay, I think it's time for you to sit down for a year and be my janitor. Serve your dad. But I've got a call to preach. God knows that. My dad knows that. But what's the word of the Lord? Serve your dad. What's the word of the Lord for all of us in this room? Serve our Heavenly Father. See how simple that is? Now, with that, what's amazing with that is we move into intercession. But it all comes from relationship. See, it makes ministry, let me bring my phone down here because my notes are on it. It makes ministry so much easier when you do it through relationship. I don't want God, Manny, to promote me unless it's through relationship and intimacy with him. I really don't. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you this moment that happened. My, this is my wife and I were living in Forney a few years ago. And I was in my uh, kitchen area, and, uh, 
and, and the Lord said, Lindsay, or the Holy Spirit said this. He said, he said, Lindsay, get things got you here. Nobody, I was there by myself. I don't remember my wife being near me, which happens a lot these days, but no, I'm kidding. It's just a joke. It's just a joke. My goodness. I was there, though. I might have been by myself in the house, but I, I, maybe one of my sons was there. Irrelevant to the point. I'm running out of time. Here's the point. I was there, and the Holy Spirit said, Lindsay, giftings is what got you to where you are today. But if you want to get to where the Father's taking you, it's going to take intimacy. That wasn't a prophetic word from a prophet. That was directly from the Holy Spirit. Giftings got you where you are today. But if you want to get to where I'm taking you, it's going to take intimacy with the Father. It's going to take intimacy with the Holy Spirit. It's going to take intimacy with the Son. A lot of you giftings is what got you that promotion. Giftings is what got you where you are today. Your giftings, and all those giftings come from the Lord. But if you want to get to where God's end destination is for you before you go to heaven, it's going to require intimacy. And intimacy is going to require this one word that's very hard for many people, and it's trust. If you don't trust, if you don't trust your heavenly Father, if you don't trust your heavenly Father, you, you, you'll experience moments of intimacy, but you won't be able to remain in intimacy. Spiritual fathers and mothers, they're patient. Spiritual fathers and mothers, they're relational. Very relational. Very relational. I care more about relationship with you than the call of God on your life. I don't care how, I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care what your gifting is at the end of the day. I don't care if you're a prophet to every nation in the entire world. I don't care if you, I don't, really, I don't care if you have access to a billion dollars. Because I have access to a billion and one. It doesn't, really, honestly, at the end of the day, it, it does not matter the calling on our life. Hear, hear my heart on this. Yes, I know we're going to be held accountable for what we're called to do. Absolutely. I'm sure you've heard me say that a million times. And we will. But at the end of the day, what I care about is relationship. You know why? Because if we have relationship with each other, there's trust there. And if there's trust there, we can do a lot of damage in the kingdom of hell. But if I don't know you and all I know is your degrees and you think that's what's going to get you in the door into my life, you're not going to come in through the door. What I'm looking for, what I'm looking for, listen, what I'm looking for is authenticity. I'm not looking for fake smiles. I'm not looking for brother, everything's good. And can I tell you, God's not looking for that either. He's looking for authentic sons and daughters. But you're going to have to let him heal you if you're one of the wounded ones. And it's not a shameful thing to be a wounded one. It's not a shameful thing. It's not at all. It's a freeing thing to admit, I've been wounded, and I'm going to let the healer heal me. Please don't tell me all of your degrees. I don't care. Once we dive into relationship together, once we cry together, not that we have to cry, but you get the point. <laughs> not until the moment we cry, then we can talk about degrees. <laughs> if we don't cry, we're not, we're not real friends. It's not. I only call my real friends, like Manny and I, we cry all the time together, don't we, Manny? All the time. He's calling me crying. I call Josh. We call Josh just to get us to cry. I throw salt in Caleb's eyes to get him to cry. It's just. <laughs> Our staff, we, we get emotional together as a staff. Tears flow in staff meetings. We had, we had a moment like that yesterday at our staff meeting. Everybody on our staff, they don't have Bible degrees. I can't think of a single staff person that has a Bible degree. But you know what they do have? They have the same, they have the same, they have the same degree that Peter had. They've been with Jesus. And can I tell you, can I tell you, our staff, they are made up. We have a mixture of sons and daughters. You know who I'm bringing on our staff in the future? 
not people with degrees. And I know some of you don't care to be on staff, but I want you to hear my heart. I don't bring people on with great degrees. We don't bring people on with amazing degrees, and they've been to CFNI, and they've got 1,600 degrees, and they've been to this Bible college, they've been to seminary. I really don't care. I don't. You can have all of that and still have the spirit of Judas in you. It doesn't matter. You can have all that and be addicted to porn and crack, and I would never know until later. It's, it's irrelevant at the end of the day. What matters, and there's a place for studies here in my heart. There's a place to, to learn and to grow and to, and to give yourself to the studying of the word and to understand the context. Hear my heart on this. Don't walk away, pastors, against people who go to college. No, I'm against people who brag about their degree but, but, have, but have issues and they cover them up and they think that their degree is going to get them into relationship. They use their degree as a token to get them into ministry. Look at the guys that Jesus called on his 12 that he said they were going to rule and reign with him. Not a single one of them had a Bible college degree. They were fishermen. One was a tax collector who was despised. They were average Joes. Some think the youngest could have been at the age of 13. What if I invited your 13-year-old to join my staff? Would you get offended that I picked your 13-year-old over you? And many people's minds, there must be something sexually immoral there for him to pick a 13-year-old. Now, maybe I just see them weep in the presence more than you. Maybe, maybe their worship's authentic. Maybe they don't carry a spirit of religion on them. You, you see what I'm saying? It's about authenticity. This whole kingdom culture is about authenticity, not about how long you've been to church and and, 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 and your membership, well, I, I was a member here, and I'm a member there, and I was a member here, and I was faithful. Th- That's great to know faithfulness and loyalty. I get that. There's a place for that. But if you're doing that as a token to drive in relationship, it's just wrong. It's like what Apostle said the other day that, that, that he, was, he was sharing. He said this phrase, and it stuck with me, access without relationship. There are many people all over America who want access with leaders without relationship. So, they're relational. They're relational. I care more about relate because if I have relationship with you, I can trust you. I have relationship with my dad. He has relationship with me. He, we trust one another. But he's very patient with me. I'm growing. I'm still got areas of weakness I'm having to grow in, and he's helping me through those. He's patient with me. We're going to have to do like a part two of this. Write this down, a spiritual father and mother, they have no selfish agenda. There's no agenda. In other words, in other words they, they don't see you as a way to build their ministry. They don't see you as a way to make them famous and well-known and rich. They have no agenda. There is no agenda with my dad. There's, there's, matter of fact, there's so much no agenda that it's almost insulting. Let me tell you what I mean by that. One day I confided in him. I was crying and weeping, and he helped me through this very dark time that I was in mentally, and he helped me through this moment. And, and I was, it was just a spontaneous moment. This thing about fathers and mothers, they're just there. They're, I mean, there, there's moments to set up a meeting. I mean, if I need to meet with him about something ministry business-wise, you know, he, he very well must say, because my mom does his calendar. So even to this day, he'll say, set that up with your mom. So there's still protocol there. Well, you're my dad. And how, why do I got to get with mom to get a meeting with you? I, blah, blah. Yes, sir. Can I hear an amen? amen? Yes, sir. Absolutely. But then there's moments where we're just already together, Tyler. And we're walking out to his truck. And I just say, hey, you got a minute? 
And I just break. He helps me through it. And I said, I said, Dad, thank you. Thank you. And it's so insulting what he said next. You ready? He didn't say, son, I'll check on you. I'll check on you in a couple weeks, see how you're doing. You know how many people want that in the body of Christ? Son, I'll check on you. I'll give you a call tomorrow, see how you're doing. So many people want that. You know what he told me? He's my own dad. He said, you know where to find me. How insulting. I'm kidding, but you get the point. There's just no agenda. Why, well, why doesn't my dad, talk about my, my dad, why doesn't my dad call me more? I already have access to him. He has no agenda. If he was blowing up my phone, there might would be an agenda there. There's just no agenda. It's almost insulting. Why don't you call me more, Dad? I'm going to be honest. He's busy, and i got things going on in the world. It's totally cool. We talk and we talk, and we spend a lot of time together as is. Does that make sense? There's just no agenda. There's no, this whole thing that I, I get, some of you probably come from churches and ministries and stuff or heard about manipulation and ministry. I get that. I get, I get it can cause you to be a little bit hesitant. I understand that. So no way am I saying, like, tonight find your spiritual father and mother. And definitely I'm not saying go to people and say I'm called to be your spiritual father and mother. Please don't do that. All right, well, really, like, like if, I, if I hear that going on, I'm just going to tell you right now. And I... I this is not an open door for a, for, for, a, for, a, for a male to go to a female and say, I'm supposed to be your spiritual father. If that happens, then I'm, I'm, it's going to be hard not to think there's something in your mind that needs deliverance. Like, there's, like, are, are you hearing this? P please know my heart. It's a healthy culture. I'm not opening the door for, hey, man, uh, I'm your pastor. You think I could? I'm not, listen. I'm not looking for more spiritual sons. <laughs> I'm, still learning how to be a, I'm still learning how to be a son, and I'm still learning how to be a spiritual father. I have, I have some sons. I'm still growing in that. I feel I'm 33, but, but talking, with, talking with my own dad, and, and told me the other day, he said, it's not about age. This isn't about age. And it's not about, like, feeling feeling validated if you are a spiritual father or a spiritual mother, and I must not be anybody if I don't know. That's not, that's not the purpose of this tonight. The purpose is this is the culture of the kingdom of heaven, and God is raising up spiritual fathers and mothers to help father and mother spiritual sons and daughters, and it's all organic by the Holy Ghost. It's all organic by the Spirit of God. And this is so important, because if we can get this, and if we, can, if, we can, if we can grow in this as a body and just let Holy Spirit organically build and develop relationships and just see what they turn into, some people will simply be a friend to you in the body of Christ. Some people will be a good brother and sister that you can cry on their shoulder. Some will be a leader and a teacher to you. You'll have probably more teachers and friends than you will. Listen, if everybody's your spiritual father, then chances are a lot of those people really aren't your spiritual father. Don't confuse, yeah, a mentor and a coach with a spiritual father and mother. Does this make sense? There, it's, the key here is covenant and communion. Not I'll pay you 100 bucks to get some wisdom. Spiritual fathers require no money. Spiritual mothers require no money. Like when our kids were born, we were like, all right, guys, as soon as you can start making some money, we're going we're gonna to take a tax on that. If you want some of my wisdom, son, you owe me five bucks. Come on. I got to wrap this up. I'm, I'm already past my time. We're going to have to do a part two. Let me just get through the spiritual father and mother characteristics because I don't have time to get into the other two. But God willing, we will. Not tonight. Different time. This goes along with no selfish agenda. There's no strings attached. And then the last one is the door is always open. The door is always open. You know where to find me. What was he saying? Was he, was he, was he trying to be insulting? No. What was he saying? He was saying, son, I'm here. 
It's on you to pursue me. You know why? Because he has no agenda. He's not trying to be a spiritual father. He doesn't get validated in an arrogant way by me being a spiritual son to him. The ball is completely in my court. He's opened the door, and I have, I have full access to him because he's given me full access. If you go to somebody and they don't give you full access, then guess what? Stop beating on that door. God's got somebody else for you. You have to be okay with that. I, I'll close with this. I told a guy one time, because I, I, I really want to talk about characteristics of sons and daughters. Can I just give you one for you to chew on? I'm not going to teach on it. I just want to give you one. Are you ready? Spiritual sons and daughters, they're authentic. That right there, you can chew on that for a month. They're authentic. In other words, when they get around their spiritual parents, there should be no fight in them to try to be somebody spiritual. It's just what you see is what you get. I mean, it's just like the Father already knows the good, the bad, and the ugly of our life. And can I tell you? He wants, he wants all of you. So if you find a true spiritual father and if you find a true spiritual mother, they're gold. But the only way you can receive them well, I taught our staff through the day, I asked the question. I said, how well can you receive them? Oh, that was good. I didn't know there was an outside noise. And then I turn around and she was the piano. Good. All right, sweet. What's that noise? And then there was a lot of an angel in my corner. It's Pastor Evans' wife, Zoe. God willing is I'll put this, I'll put a note in here to, to remind me to teach us what God's helping me with right now, what the Father's helping me with and learning how to receive. And let me, let me put it to you very simply. Because if somebody were to come up to you right now and hand you a billion dollars, I just want to bless you with this, no strings attached. How many of you would receive it? If you don't raise your hand, because you'll tithe off that and then, you know what I'm saying? Like, I hope you would. It was a trick question. There was, I'm joking. I'm joking. See how my brain goes somewhere and then people don't know my jokes and they think it's like all for real? Okay. Yeah, I like to kind of live, flirt with the edge there, you know. And then you'd sow seed and then it would be like, no, I'm kidding. All right, here's the deal. You would receive it receive it in the natural, but how, how, how would you receive it internally? Here's, here's the point. Maybe you'd be like, oh no, man, you ain't got to do that. You know, oh no, you, how many of you guys got any, no, you don't have to do that, man. No, it's good. Or you get gifted something. You get gifted something. <laughs> And then somebody says, oh, that's really nice. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, but somebody gave it to me. I, I, I didn't buy it. I, I wouldn't. I... Hey, I like those shoes. Yeah, I found them on sale. They were on sale. They were on sale. How good of a receiver are you? Because even though you would accept it in the natural internally, so here's what we do. If we struggle to receive natural things with ease, and God puts a greater value on spiritual riches than natural riches, how much more difficult is it to receive what God values more? So the revelation is this. If you struggle to receive materialism, I bet you struggle to receive the Father's love. And if you struggle to receive the Father's love, it's very tough to be authentic. sense? 
You stand to your feet with me. And then we have the orphan spirit that we have to deal with that, that we don't have time to dive into deeply tonight, but orphan spirit basically says nobody wants me, nobody cares the orphan spirit says what the guy said in the Bible, can anything good come out of Nazareth and let me, let me, let me reverb that for the orphan spirit mentality can anything good come out of my life how can somebody love me why did my parents leave me why did my dad treat me the way that he treated me? Why did I get talked to the way I got talked to? Maybe I was in the way. Maybe the divorce was my fault. You see what I'm saying? Nobody wants me. I'm just an orphan. That's, that's the orphan spirit talking. It comes with its friend rejection. The spirit of rejection is an actual demon that resides, believe it or not, in a lot of Christians. Lives in a lot of believers. I don't have time to get in theology on how demons, on how Christians can actually have demons living in them. But there are Christians, lots of them, that have demons living in them. It doesn't mean they're demon possessed, but they're demonized. They seen Christians in our own house. They love the Lord. I know they're saved and they manifest and they get delivered. I just want you to close your eyes for a moment. It's a very tender thing. It's a very tender thing. This is a very sensitive thing. This is a very sensitive moment to where the kingdom of heaven is also filled with honor and dignity. Nobody's dignity is getting stripped tonight. Nobody's dignity is getting stripped tonight. But you have to come to the end of yourself to admit, I care about freedom more than what people think. We have a shirt out in our lobby, I believe it says, deliverance over dignity. Is that right? Like you care more about freedom than what you look like. And if you're at that place right now in your life, it's where you're like, man, this, 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 I hate to even call it the peace of the culture, but this, this culture of heaven, this element, this family culture, what heaven's filled with family, sons and daughters with their father, with their elder brother, Jesus. If this is really ministering to you, can I, just every eye closed, can I just see your hand as your pastor? You say, this is, this is really speaking to me right now. I just want, I, you're not going to look around. I just want to encourage you. There's, there's hands up in the room. You're not alone. Hallelujah. Before anybody, Abba can be a spiritual father spiritual mother before anybody can be a spiritual son and daughter that all comes from looking to you as our heavenly father the culture of heaven exists in you comes from you flows out of you the culture of heaven is you you embody the culture of heaven the reason why heaven is the way it is because it's who you are Feel the kingdom of heaven with yourself. And you have called us to be a part of your country called the kingdom of heaven. We're citizens of the country of heaven. It's bigger than a country, it's a kingdom. And I just lift up your sons and daughters in this room. You just lift your hands in a receiving position. Just put them out in front of you like you're receiving a gift. I just want you to close your eyes and I want you to see the Father handing you your identity in him through Jesus I want you to see the father handing you a gift and in that gift in that gift now hear me on this in that gift it's 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 on it it says 
salvation, and then below it, it says the full package deal. And inside of that gift is everything you need for life and godliness. Now, I know, I know most of you, if not everybody in the room, you've received already salvation. But I want you to imagine the Father giving that to you. Matter of fact, even take yourself back to when you gave your life to the Lord, if you can remember that defining moment in your life. And just take yourself back there and just see the Father himself handing you this gift. And in that comes the fullness of his love. In that comes the fullness of joy. The fullness of peace. No fear, no rejection. There's no orphan spirit in that. It's just complete field with Abba himself. And when you receive that, the orphan spirit has to go. A spirit of rejection has to leave. Now you're accepted by the Heavenly Father. Father, I thank you for a culture here in Hunt County. I thank you for a culture here at this campus, on this property, almost 10 acres of land, that completely embodies the culture of heaven. And I thank you, Lord, that your people are being filled and are filled with your glory and they're releasing your Father, I thank you that you're teaching us how to be spiritual fathers and mothers. And you're also teaching us how to be spiritual sons and daughters, first of all, to you, and then also to anybody you would bring into our life that is a divine connection from you by your spirit to us, an actual person that would be a spiritual type of spiritual father and a type of spiritual mother. spiritual father and mother, just tell the Lord right now, say, Father, I would, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to allow anybody to take away from you being my, my main father, I, but, but I do desire someone with flesh on that, that can mentor me and speak into my life and be there for me, help me. It's okay, it's biblical, it's not like somebody's going to stand in the way of your relationship with God. Just tell them right now. Say, Lord, I desire that. And if that's your will for me, will you bring somebody into my life? Will you show me? Show me who that, who that is. Whenever that time comes, will you put a witness in their spirit that I'm supposed to be their son or daughter? Bree, can I tell them about the moment yesterday? Maybe will you come up here? Bree, will you come up here? Caleb, will you come up here? done. Kayla's been a spiritual son of mine for I don't know how long. And I don't even know how that came about, to be honest. I don't remember a defining moment of like, today is the day. You remember? You do? When was that? That was the moment told you your ministry is going to come through me. That, ah. Uh, so I was a youth pastor. I was in my 20s when the Lord told him that I was supposed to be a spiritual father to him. 
I'm not going to lie. I was probably the worst because I was in my 20s. But I loved them. I've been patient with them. Some of you know our story. We shared it out on the internet. It's out on the, out, it's out on the YouTube. You know, you become a good spiritual father when you can say it's the YouTube. That's really the key, Chris, to be a good spiritual father. Just call it the YouTube. Oh, man. Oh, man. They're so old. I think it'd be my spiritual father. But no, we shared this. But he, <laughs> there was a moment where I was, he would tell you, he, he lacked knowledge. He just lacked intimacy. He is just, I'm not going to get into the, his story, but I was really frustrated with him. And I was immature and young, and I was pastoring here. And I called my dad, my spiritual father, and I said, Dad, I want to, I had just had a meeting with Caleb. And he came in there all puffed up, pride, and blah, blah, blah. And I left that meeting and I called my dad. And I said, Dad, I'm ready. Listen, this is what a spiritual father and son's relationship forms into. Now, I'm, this is already after youth pastor years, and now I'm his pastor. I'm the campus pastor here, and just like I am now. And I called my dad. I said, I'm, I want to have a meeting with him tomorrow. And I want to tell him, you either get on board with the vision of this house, or you need to go find a church where you can get on board with the vision. And my dad said, you know, son, you can do that. You have the right as the pastor to do that. This, this is the beauty of, of, and there's many churches that have this culture, but this, I love the culture of Oasis. Because this is the culture that we're sitting under. Even though we're not directly there at Lakeview, this is the culture. And my dad said, son, you can do that. You have every right as the pastor to have that meeting with him tomorrow and do that. He said, or, and you know, when you're young and immature and your, your, your emotions are going, that word or, or, what is he about to say? I'm about to manifest at this point. What is he about to say? He said, or, and he said it like this, or he said these words, or you could father him. I don't want to father this guy. I'm frustrated with this guy. He said, Lindsay, pray for him for seven days. I'm going to be honest with you. I did not pray for him for seven days. I'm just being completely honest, open, and transparent with you. But I tell you what, if I would have done that, he told me, because we've had this conversation more than once. He said, if you would have done that, I would have left the church. And I don't know what the relationship would be. What it is now. I love you. I want you to see an example. I want you to see this. I was ready to kick him out of the church because of his immaturity. I was immature. Any, any new dads in the room? Brandon, you're about to be a dad. <laughs> learn, from, learn from my mistakes. Come on. I'm here to spank my newborn because he was crying in the middle of the night. Okay, we're going to start now. Discipline. Be quiet. I'm trying to sleep. Terrible. Who does that? I do. I'm a terrible newborn dad. Now I have two. I'm better now. I know you would never think about doing that. Some of you probably wouldn't, but it's like the first that always gets it the worst because you're trying to figure out life. So we've had this dynamic in relationship for a while, and uh, he knows he can call me whenever he wants, text me whenever he wants about anything. And um, God healed that relationship. And it's awesome. Bree, on the other hand, Bree's, Bree's been a daughter of Oasis. She, she, got, she rededicated her life right over here and uh, put fire underneath his feet to do some with his life, and he wanted to get saved. And so Bree, just yesterday, so God's been speaking to me about Bree lately, and he's been telling me, see Bree as a daughter. Now, I have not said a word to Bree about this. Just, just Holy Spirit's been helping me. He's been speaking to me to see Bree as a daughter. This is what's amazing. This all this is all fresh. So if there's tears, just know why. It's all fresh. Yesterday, after our staff meeting, she pulls us aside. And uh, and there was a moment where my wife and I and her were in our office and I said, Bree, how do I even say it to you? Basically, remember how how it was worded? Like Bree. 
might have said something like, you know, your husband's been a son, you know, and have you ever thought about being, I forget, but she was like, yes, yes. And that transition happened yesterday for her from being a, being a daughter of the house, which is awesome. She's faithful. She serves. She's amazing. But now there's been a transition in her world to be a spiritual daughter to my wife and I. Now we're all in a similar age category here there's a respect and an honor in a way that they look at my wife and I that's unique and this is what that relationship looks like it's the way even though I have my earthly dad he's my spiritual father I respect him as that he's not just my dad and if he calls me tonight and says son I need to talk to you about ministry there's a shift where it's boss mode does this make sense the son and the daughter they have to put on whatever hats necessary to be able to receive from their leader that's how that works it's not I want my dad to talk to me a certain way or my mom to talk to me a certain way. It's, it's a matter of there's, a, there's the trust there. So this is all super fresh for her. And I just, she, she wrestled with internally, God's bringing her in. I'm very proud of her. And she knows her husband's been, been a son to me for a while. But for her now, she stepped into this. Now, I said that because it's fresh. And I just, I want to pray over us before we go that you'll leave here tonight, first of all, seeing your Heavenly Father the right way. Amen. I want to share this with you. When Jesus says, if you give up your fathers and mothers, if you give up and he lists things there, you give up your brothers and sisters, whatever, he says, in this lifetime, you will reap. You ready? He says everything, he says, it, he, he might have said everything that he, he said there that you have to give up, except for he does not say you'll get a father in return. Think about this. He says, if you walk away from your earthly father, your earthly mother, your brother, your sister, I'd have to look at the verse. But he says, in return, on this side of eternity, you're going to get a mother and a brother and a house and sisters, all that stuff. What's his point? He doesn't mention father there because he wants us to look to our Heavenly Father. This is how important this is. If we can grasp that, it's a game changer. So Father, right now, Lord, I know people have to wake up and go to work tomorrow, so I just pray what I pray over my own kids over this house tonight, that when they wake up, Holy Spirit, you'll quicken their mortal body. You'll give them just amazing rest tonight, energy, and just help them sleep well so they can wake up in the morning energized, ready to go and conquer the day that you've made. Father, I just, I thank you that you're raising up spiritual fathers and mothers in this house and you're raising up spiritual sons and daughters and there's just this culture that's developing. It's called kingdom culture that's developing. And I just pray, Father, that bottom line, we look to you as our heavenly father, not just El Shaddai or God, but what do fathers do? They do provide. They, 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 they <laughs> you're, you're everything. You are everything, Abba, and we're we get to call you Father. You've in, you're inviting us in right now to call you Father, for you to be our Father and us to be your son and daughter. Holy Spirit, I pray you just seal the deal tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, there's no money talk. That was already given. I love you, church. Can I, can I say this? We went and saw Jesus' revolution last night. Can, can I say this? The hippies of today are the transgender. I know it's late. The hippies of today are the drug addicts. The hippies of today are the are the homosexuals and the lesbians. Those are the, the Jesus movement was a lot of hippies and people doing drugs. The hippies of today are those people. You know what they need? Holy Spirit told me this just the other day. He said they don't need people preaching at them. They need people to love them. They need a father and a mother. But ultimately, they need to encounter their heavenly father. And if they'll do that, they'll get their identity. The Holy Spirit is the best at telling people about who they are. Amen? It, it spreads. It's for us, but it's for them. All right, Kelly. Look at somebody next to you and say, God is good. He's a good father. Amen. Hey, we want to encourage you. You can have a seat for just a second. 
We here at Oasis, we protect culture. And the way that we do that is we have values set up in place. If you look at the seat in front of you, there is a value card. We um, take every month, we have a value of the month. This month, we have a brand new value because it's March 1st, and our value is honesty, hot conversations, honest, open, and transparent. We don't shy away from courageous conversations because we know it produces something in us. Pastor Lindsay just talked about how our staff, he has hot conversations with us and we lean into him because no matter how awkward it may feel in the moment, the growth that we experience is worth it, amen? So I wanna encourage you this month, don't pull back from open, honest, and transparent conversations, amen? Hey, who loves our kids' ministry? They're the best, they're the best of the best, and they're looking for donations. They're, those little hustlers are running around everywhere around here. You hear us say it all the time. But hey, if you are at the store and you see some candy, they'd love for you to donate it to the kids' ministry for the Resurrection Sunday celebration. One more thing, encounter night, March 18th. We're gonna be having an encounter night here after our love and action day where we go out and love on Hunt County. And we're encouraging all of us to find people that need healing, that need freedom, that need deliverance and get them here on March 18th because we are going to provide the kingdom of heaven to those who are hungry. So if you know someone who needs a taste of the kingdom, bring them here. We love you. We can't wait to see you. Until next time, be an oasis wherever you go.